Elsie's Bird by Jane Yolen and David Small. Elsie was a Boston girl. From the time she was a little child, hair and pigtails, she knew the cozy harbor where gulls screamed at fishing boats, where the fish merchants called, Fresh cod! Fresh! She would run along the lazy curves of the busy streets, listening to the clop of horses' hooves on stone cobbles. She played skip rope with her friends, calling Lady Lady at the gate. Birds began singing before sunrise, and Elsie knew all of their names. Cardinal, Chickadee, Robin, Wren, she loved to sing their songs back at them. But then her mama died. After that, every Sunday when the steeple bell rang, Elsie went to church with her papa to speak familiar prayers and sing favorite hymns and remember. Even so, it was a comfortable childhood, and all Elsie knew, but Papa longed for something else, something far away from Boston and the sadness in his heart. When Elsie turned eight, Papa could no longer disguise his longing. We are going west, Elsie, he said. We are going to find some happiness away from here. She thought west meant Concord or Lincoln, towns a day's travel away. He met someplace much further, a faraway place called Nebraska, where there were few people and almost no towns at all. Elsie's grandmother Nana wept and her grandfather Nani harumphed. Her friends all made her little gifts. Then Elsie and her father got on a train. They both carried carpet bags full of clothes and brought along a maple chest packed with linens her mother had sewn over the long year before she died. Best of all, Elsie took a birdcage with her new canary, Timmy Toon, yellow as the sun over Boston Harbor. They sang to one another, bird and girl, along the gathering miles. All the way west, the clacketing of the wheels reminded Elsie how far she was going, away from the sound of the sea and the familiar bowl of sky. She might not have gone west had she known the only sea there was a sea of grass. She might not have gone west had she known the nearest neighbors lived miles away. She might have stayed home in Boston with her Nana and Nani. But she had already lost her mother. She couldn't bear to be parted from Papa, too. When they got to Nebraska to the plot of land Papa had bought... There was only a house built in the ground. Its roof was made of sod, and grass grew around the chimney. Elsie wrote a letter home to Nana and Nani. Here there was only grass and sky and silence. The only sound at night was her own crying in her little bed. But she didn't let Papa know. Sure, there was sound in Nebraska, wind through the grass during the day, crickets and grasshoppers at night, but Elsie couldn't hear it, and when it rained that hard rain, she huddled, not listening, in the cool dark of the sod house, dreaming of Boston cobbles and bells. The only familiar comfort she had was Timmy Tune, and she sang back and forth with him hymns and jump rope tunes and old catches and sailor songs like Cape Cod Girls and Come All Ye Bold Fishermen. She sang as she made dinner or sewed a sampler. She sang as she watched out the window as Papa plowed with their great horse Joe. Sometimes she stood at the door following Papa with her eyes as he rode off in the wagon to get supplies in the nearest town ten miles away. But she didn't go outside to wave goodbye. Oh, Papa tried to get her to walk out. He'd say, come with me to the river, Elsie. The fish are jumping at the flies. Or come out with me to see the sunset, painting the big sky red. But she was afraid to lose herself in the silence of the prairie. She would touch Timmy Toon's cage as if he kept her safe. 
Well, I'm glad you've got that canary, Papa said, then hugged her and drove away. Only one Friday, when Papa had gone off again buying seed corn for the coming spring, Elsie accidentally left the cage door open. Timmy flew right out, winging through an open window. Elsie grabbed up the cage and, without thinking, ran outside after him. Timmy, she cried and whistled. Timmy, she called to coax him back. She ran across the farmyard and into the tall prairie grass, crying the canary's name. Timmy, she sobbed, Timmy, until all that could be seen of her was the hand holding the cage up above the high grass. The sun rose high and higher still as Elsie whistled and pushed through the grass till the house was lost behind her. Papa had told her a tale of a farm wife who walked farther and farther into the sea of grass and never came back. He'd meant it as a warning, but she didn't care. It was Timmy who was lost, Timmy who had to be found. Timmy! She cried again, and then, in a thin, hoarse voice, began to sing his favorite song. Go in and out the window. She kept walking till she came upon a small creek where she sank down, crying on the bank. And there, where the grass stood green gold, Timmy Toon began to sing back, circling and circling overhead. Then he flew down, perched on her shoulder, and sang out loud and long. Gently she put her hands around him, not like a cage to keep him in, but just to touch his golden head. Suddenly they both heard a raspy, Coolie! Coolie! A blackbird flew over to them and sang again, Coolie! Elsie sang back, Coolie! And then, oh then, sitting there by the burbling creek in the green gold grass under the sun-washed sky, Elsie finally heard the voices of the plains. She heard wind rippling through the grass. She heard wind rippling the grass. She heard long V's of geese spinning out cries like thread, the creaking call of sandhill cranes, the bubbly larkspur far out over the tall stalks. She clapped her hands and sang back to them too skip rope songs and sea shanties and hymns from her Boston church and Timmy Toon sang along with her. Elsie, Elsie, where are you? Elsie heard a frightened voice calling her name from far, far away in the grass. It was Papa. Papa, she cried, I'm here, here. She picked up the cage and ran toward the sound of his voice. Timmy followed above her, stopping now and then to rest upon a stalk. When she saw Papa at last at the edge of the tall grass, Elsie heard other sounds too, for he had bought five hens and a strutting banty rooster in town that very day. He had traded Mama's one-star quilt for a dog. How Elsie loved that hound from the first moment it greeted her, jumping up and licking her face, and then a roaring in her ear. She sang back to it, a childhood favorite, with a bow-wow here and a bow-wow there. And Timmy Toon sang along, that hound, those hens, that banty rooster, and all the noise they made kept Elsie's house full of sound, and Elsie loved them all, for they turned her house into a true prairie home. <laughs>